Yes, thank you. I come to you, and then you just keep backing up. We're going to be at the other sign that says <laughs> one way in a little bit. You're a big, scary Indian man. Hey, what's up, you guys? We're back out here in Moab, Utah. Uh, we're doing a different trail today. Today we're going to be going over the trail Fins and Things, which is a little bit further up than the last trail we did, which was Hell's Revenge. Um, Luke, so where exactly are we? So this trail is in proximity to Hell's Revenge. It's about a mile and a half further down the road. So you keep going past the pay station, continue on that same highway, and then that highway ends and it turns into a dirt road. You continue on that dirt road half a mile and then you'll see there's a ton of signs and stuff. It says Fins and Things, clearly marked as you can see. The whole, the whole route is also marked like, like Hell's Revenge. You have yellow markers, you have white dots, so that you can continue on the trail all the way through. All right, you guys, so a little bit more about the Fins and Things Trail, the one that we're on, is it has a few more rules and regulations than maybe some of the other trails. One of which, if you look behind me, there's a 15 miles an hour limit sign. Um, there's also a sign here that says the maximum speed is 20, right? Don't exceed 20. And also another important note is this trail is not open for nighttime hours. One of the reasons that I think that is is because we've come out here in the nighttime and we've gotten lost. You know, it kind of has a loop and sometimes the loop you get stuck in it. And so as you come out here, make sure to follow those rules and also be aware that you can't come here during the night. A couple things to note, Luke and I want to make sure we let y'all know, this trail is rated five out of a 10. So you're going to see a number of clips. One will be GoPro action. The other was going to be drone. And then I'll try and hold this camera as steady as I can throughout the drive in, in parts that I think are pretty scenic. Fins and things. This is your halfway point as far as difficulty. At the end of it, I'll let you know whether or not I thought I was gonna die. I got you, Or whether I feel more alive. Yeet! So why do we build and maintain them? Because they work. <laughs> the born after photos. <laughs> because they work. We use them because. Hey, you guys. We're just a little bit ways into this into this trail today. Um, and I wanted to point something out with this trail that's a little unique um, and somewhat newer to Moab. Um, in the past, it's been very much so follow the black trails, follow the white dots. But now, even as we've just been on this trail for a little while, I've noticed that this trail has so much of these markers. And it's very, very, uh, in some would say, dummy proof. Because you can come up here and you can not know the trail at all. You can never have been here before. And you won't get lost because somebody, some good person, <laughs> has come out and put these signs here so that you can go out and not worry about getting lost.
right now we're stopped at the first campground that you come upon uh, while you're on the Fins and Things Trail. Right behind me, there's all sorts of rules. There's information about it. There's how much you pay. You guys are welcome to look that up. The website is sandflats.org. All right, so that's where you come out here. You can come out here, you can camp, you can bring your machines. Um, like I said, there's all sorts of rules. But I just wanted everyone to know that that's actually an option here. Is you can actually camp on this trail. The trail is, you know, 30 seconds that way, and there's all sorts of campgrounds this way. All right, so I also wanted to mention some etiquette um, for the trails here in Moab. Lots of times you'll be driving down the trail and you see a Jeep and the guy will have his hand out the window with one, two, three, four, whatever the number may be. And if it's five, it means it could be five or more. And those numbers mean how many people are behind them. That way we're all safe. You know, when you're cruising down the trail and you see a Jeep and he holds up two, you know that there are two people in his group behind him. The next person hold up a one, and the person after that will hold up a fist like this. And it's important for you to note this because if you come out with your friends for the safety of everybody, you gotta do the same thing. If you're in a group of five and you're up front, hold four up because you know there's four people behind you. These are just some basic etiquettes to not only keep us safe, but make it so that you know we're all communicating well. All right, so right now we're just barely over two miles through Fins and Things, and this is actually where the trail hops back on the main road here, the same road that you take from Moab, just all the way up here. Now behind me, as you can see, there's a one lane road sign. This canyon gets really thin. You gotta be careful through there because there is traffic coming both ways. But you're only on the road here for about a half a mile until you get back on the trail and you go this way up and around throughout the rest of the trail. So let's get to it. We wanna show you some more things. miles into this thing so far we've had a chance to get into the trail a little bit and now we're back out onto the main road or actually the main road that will go through the actual trail there's two main stops along this road as well from what Dodge says the the lanes get kind of tight if you're uh, if we're passing Jeeps or maybe some trucks or whatnot but so far it's been really cool because at this five out of 10, apparently there are some easy routes, but if you want something a little more difficult, there's also some paths that require a little more technical driving, maybe a little better machine. I think that's pretty cool because it makes everybody happy. And where this one has some campgrounds in it, it really does mean it doesn't matter if you're looking for something more difficult or if you're looking for something just easy to cruise through with, you know, some water, some good times, some good tunes. This is it. I like this trail so far. Something to try and make you feel at home. <laughs>
All right, so right now I'm standing right outside the radio tower. When you roll up to Fins and Things, there's a sign with the trail map, and there were two major points on it. One of them was the diving board, which we just came from, and the other one was this radio tower that's behind me. Now, the radio tower, you know, isn't maybe something super special, but what is special is the road that goes by it. You know, oftentimes we get snuck up uh, with time, the sun goes down, we're hungry, the kids are crying in the back, whatever it may be, you know, we're out on the trail and we need a way out. And this right here is almost dead center of the trail and it's a road that's accessible for everybody to get back to the main road quicker than you normally would either turning around or finishing the trail. So as the radio tower might, might not be anything special, the road is gonna be your saving grace. So we're at the exit of the trail. This one was fun. We had a good balance between what would be smooth, just kind of sweeping turns, and then there were some rocks. We saw campgrounds. We saw some landmarks. Definitely a cool trail. Fins and things. We're gonna try and do 15 of these total. So I may have a few more of these for you. But um, if you like this vid or something like it, I mean, it's kind of quarantine content in a way as the colors kind of change. Give me a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Maybe you wanna come back and visit some more. Hopefully, if you're considering one of these, this will help you in your process. Hey you guys, thanks so much for following us today on Fins and Things here in Moab, Utah. We just wanted to make sure that you guys know that this is for everybody. Okay, we just finished the trail. As you can see behind me, this is a one way, so we just came out. Okay, the parking that's right over here. And honestly, we all had a good time. The trail was fun all the way through. And although there were some hard obstacles, there was always an easy way around it for those of us who are a little more timid or beginner. And so don't be afraid to come out. And if you guys you know, need some suggestions or anything, hit us up. There's tons of places in town that have great information, but hey, don't be afraid to get out here.